Thanksgiving to you and uh, blessings to you and your family this week. Uh, this uh, video we had is just a little teaser for uh, what uh, a friend of ours who's been in our midst before, Josh Garrels, and his band. There's actually a few people in that video that have uh, graced our presence before. Um, Ed Fredericks is putting on a uh, dinner and a movie night. He is located at the table just outside in the lobby. If you are interested in being involved in this, there are uh, tickets available for purchase as well as if you'd like to help out, uh, set up, tear down, help out with the, the soups. Uh, it should be a good time and uh, this, this story that Josh tells is a, is a very uh, wonderful uh, story of, of the Lord working through his life, through his music. Uh, please join us for that. Uh, this week there are no Wednesday night activities. Uh, please note that if you show up, uh, you, you may be the only one. And so uh, next week we will reconvene. Uh, today uh, we are celebrating communion. Today is Communion Sunday. And we have two tables up here uh, on my right and, and my left. And Daryl will uh, guide us through that here as we go along. Uh, I wanted to let you know that uh, we do have, uh, for the first time, it's kind of neat, a gluten-free option. Never thought that was possible, but we, we have that. Uh, so if that fits you and it suits your, uh, your, your body, how else do I say that? I don't know. Uh, we, we do have that. Please ask for that when, when you come up for communion. I want to thank Paula Kaiser and uh, Rachel Taylor and Louise Morehouse for uh, helping us out set up today. Um, starting next week, uh, for the first time in, in our, our Muncie Alliance history, we get the option of uh, celebrating Advent. And we're going to celebrate for four weeks. Uh, you may have been handed one of these little pamphlets. Uh, as you entered the door, uh, please keep this with you. Take it home with you throughout the week. Come back with it. We're going to use it all throughout the season. If you lose it, we'll have more. But this is yours for the season, and this is meant to be a celebration. And I want you to think about these phrases. Maybe you've heard them before. For unto us a child is born. Today in the city of David a Savior is born, who is Christ the Lord. And a virgin will give birth, and she will call his name Emmanuel, meaning God with us. Some of these phrases, some of these prophecies about Jesus were spoken up to 7,000 years before he came on the scene. And we're going to talk about how important they are and how important this season is to celebrate, celebrate the birth of Christ, not only in our world, but also the birth of Christ in our life. Please join us for that. Important announcement for that is for the next four weeks, starting next, next Sunday, the second and third grade classroom and the fourth and fifth grade classroom will be closed. We want you to uh, have your children join you here, uh, join us all in here. And we're actually going to rearrange these chairs today right after the service. And for 17 minutes of your life, if you'd like to help out, uh, no more, no less, uh, if you'd like to help us just rearrange the chairs slightly, we're actually going to put them in more of a, a U shape, kind of make this celebration in the round. And so I wanted to say that, so next week when you come, it will be different. If you have your spot, your seat at this location in this auditorium, it will likely change. So come early to select your seat. How's that? Um, but please join us for the next four Sundays. Again, children, second and third grade, fourth and fifth grade classes on up uh, will join us here in the auditorium. Um, and last but not least, Lori Lunsford reminded me today's the last day or this week is the last week. To turn in your doodles. All of you who doodle while People like us talk and you kind of daydream and, and doodle. Now's your time to shine and so turn your doodles in. She said we can just put them in the offering box. The offering box is located in the back right underneath the exit sign. Uh, turn them in and, uh, and it may just be found on the art wall out there over the next month. Um, at that, uh, we have a, uh, a baby dedication celebration today, and uh, I think we have a class, a class of 2013, about eight children are going to join us up here. So, Ellen, I'll invite you up, and um, families uh, that, are, that have children that are going to be dedicated, why don't you come on up as well, this includes my family, and we'll just line up right, right down here in front of me. So please, come, make, make your way on up. Charlotte's happy.
his family's not here yet. Which, which isn't? Oh. I haven't seen the Blakeleys. <clears throat> Are the Blakeleys in the house? Oh, they just got here. Go, go slow. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Well, I'll begin by reading a couple of scriptures that I think are uh, relevant. I want to say, first of all, it's, it's always an honor and a privilege to uh, be able to welcome young ones to the church and to recognize them and to uh, see the parents take the responsibility of presenting them to the Lord. I think that's so important. And, uh, of course, it's the congregation's opportunity, too, to see that these children represent new responsibilities for all of us to uh, love them <laughs> and to uh, help them to grow up and to be the men and women that God wants them to be. So uh, let me read a couple of scriptures that, that pertain to this. Of course, the scripture I love the most is where Jesus said, Suffer the little children to come unto me. Uh, and don't neglect them. Don't deny them. And, and so ever since that time, we have uh, honored that request of Jesus to let the little children come on to him. And uh, so that's what we're, we're going to do this morning, honor the parents, honor the, the grandparents and the relatives who are here, and, and also uh, charge the parents with the responsibility of being the parents that God wants them to be. It says in uh, Deuteronomy, it says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be upon your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Tie them as symbols on our hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the doorposts of your houses and on your gates. Uh, it's one of the earliest commandments about how parents are to teach their children and to love their children. I also like the one where uh, Samuel's mother prayed for a son, prayed for a boy. And she prayed and prayed and finally uh, God granted her her wish and, and she had a little boy. And when he was three years old, she took him to the temple and presented him to the Lord. Uh, it, it's uh, symbolic of how we relinquish part of our responsibility to the Lord because if you're first time parents you certainly know you're not prepared <laughs> to be a parent. It takes one child to raise a parent. So we all have gone through that. And so it's a, it's a privilege that today to see these children come and to be um, dedicated to the Lord. I'm going to read the names of all of the children here. We'll start with the Blakeleys. We're going to do it in alphabetical order. But uh, Larry and Dana Blakely. No, I'll, I'll come down there. How's that? <laughs> uh, Larry and Dana Blakely have uh, Chloe, Alethea, and Scarlet Love. Okay. Uh, why did you name them thus? Uh <laughs> well, I got a button, a hair in a button here. Oh, Hold on, there we go. Um, I guess we named them, um, we prayed a lot about their names, especially as we're in the hospital. We kind of wanted to look at them a little bit before we, but uh, we, we just really wanted to make sure that it was honoring the Lord. And uh, Chloe's name means uh, kind of green or growth, and uh, Lathia is Greek for truth. Uh, all the kids have virtue middle names, and uh, Scarlet um, is kind of like the blood of Christ, and her middle name is Love. So, thank you, thank you. And here are the Karkis. And why did you name your little one such? Um, well, Alex is being dedicated today, and we named him Alexander because we liked um, the idea that his name means um, defender or protector. So. Hi, uh, we named our kid uh, Josiah. I guess Josiah is probably one of my favorite Old Testament characters. His his love for the Word of God and his his dedication to uh, what was on God's heart. So, hope my son goes in that direction. 
<coughs> we named our daughter Hope Hanessa. Um, the Lord gave me this name as I was um, studying uh, the book of Esther. Um, and just, uh, um, you know, obviously as the Lord is our hope and uh, loved um, Hadassah, or Esther's <laughs> Jewish name. <laughs> This is Ainsley Joe Douglas, and Joe is just a middle name that has um, been in our family, um, namely my grandfather who passed away going on three years, and we're just happy to have that name carry on. Uh, this is Charlotte Elise and Liam Joshua. We're doing a, a twofer today. Um, Charlotte Elise means uh, she likes to speak too. Freely, freedom, and consecrated to God, uh, as we freely consecrate her to God, that is our intention. And uh, Liam Joshua means unwavering protector, because he's a man, and he needs a strong name. So, he, and he actually is. He's, he protects us all. So, Amen. Thank you. Um, would the people who are here with the Blakeleys, are, are there any families here with the Blakeleys? Would you please stand? You're it, uh, okay. H how about with uh, the Douglas family? Anybody here with them? There we go. Thank you for coming. We, we appreciate it. Yeah, give them a round of applause. They, they're they're ra largely responsible for this anyway, so give them a hand. Okay, with the Karki family. Anybody here with the Karki family? All right. Familiar faces. How about the uh, Osterday family? Anybody here with the Osterday family? Just, Just you guys, okay. <laughs> There's one. <laughs> All right. Uh, how about the Rileys? Anybody here with the Rileys today? Okay, thank you for coming. And finally, the Zenthofer. Is your family here yet? Yeah, here we go. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you all for coming. And you realize that uh, just not just the family has a responsibility, but all of us as the body of Christ uh, have responsibility for these children. So words of encouragement, uh, help when we, they need help, uh, blessing them always, praying for them always is, is very appropriate. I, I think we've prayed more for our children after they're out of the house than when they were still in house. <laughs> so that's important that we keep doing that. I'm not going to pick up each baby and bless them. I'm just going to have a prayer for everybody. Uh, that could be chaotic, so I'm just going to pr have a prayer for all of you. So in Jesus' name, we bring before you, God, these little ones. The, the parents are here to hold them and present them to you. And by coming forward and holding them before the congregation, they have done so. And they stand before you, Lord, as accountable, the ones to lead them and guide them and direct them so that they become men and women who not only know you and not only hide your word in their heart, but they grow up to be men and women who fulfill the plan that you have for each one, for surely you have a plan for each one. And we just give your blessing to our the dads and the moms that as they teach and share, that they would be the examples that you want them to be. And now I'd like to have the whole congregation stand, if you would. And as we stand up, Lord, we are agreeing together that bringing children into the world, being a family, is the most blessed thing that can happen to us. We, we are lonely when we don't have a family. We are so blessed when we have a family. And we are all one family together, Lord Jesus. And you're watching us, you're guiding us, you're directing us. And as we watch our children grow up before you, we pray that they, we would be examples to them and show them the way. And wherever possible, Lord, we pray that uh, they would be an example of your light and your love wherever they are, in a home, in the school, in the neighborhood. Protect them from evil in every sense of the word, spirit, mind, and body, and preserve them, Lord, for the day when they fulfill righteousness as you see it. We pray these things in Jesus' name. And all the congregation said, amen. Amen. Thank you all.
And as they take these candles, they light them on their birthday from the, in the future. They will remember that they were dedicated to the Lord on this day. Thank you, Nancy, for preparing them. So as you've seen already, this Sunday is a little bit different um, than our normal Sunday service. Um, we're going to continue with the different theme. Um, but we're going to have, through the rest of our time together, um, we're going to have some extra time for worship and for reflection and for prayer. Um, our brother Nathan Taylor is going to share some things that the Lord put on his heart and lead us in some prayer time as well. And we're going to take the Lord's Supper or communion. Um, so I just encourage you um, to take some time now um, as I pray and as we get started with the music um, to tune, tune your heart into where you are really at right now. Um, ask the Lord to help you to be real with yourself and invite Jesus into that, into where you're at right now. Because um, I believe he has words to speak to you, to each of us today, and I believe that we need, we need those words. We need to hear from him. So, Father, this time this morning is for you. It's you for you, our God, our Father, and for the Lamb who was slain. We want to worship you during this time. We want to celebrate you. During this time, we want to love you. And I just ask your presence that we need to overpower us this morning. Lord, you are holy. You're above everything, any, everyone in all categories we can think of. Spirit, lead us in, in worship of you. In Jesus' name.
Psalm 31 says, Oh, how abundant is your goodness, which you have stored up for those who fear you and worked for those who take refuge in you in the sight of the children of mankind. In the cover of your presence, you hide them from the plots of men. You store them in your shelter from the strife of tongues. Blessed be, God, blessed be the Lord, for he has wondrously shown his steadfast love to me when I was in a besieged city. I had said in my alarm, I'm cut off from your sight. But you heard the voice of my pleas for mercy when I cried to you for help. Love the Lord, all you his saints. The Lord preserves the faithful, but abundantly repays those, the one who acts in pride. Be strong and let your heart take courage, all you who wait for the Lord.
ask you, come, Lord, we need you. We need you to pour in our thirsty hearts. We thank you that you will. You guys can have a seat. Um, I'm going to have Nathan Taylor come up. He's got some things that the Lord's put on his heart to share, and this time the kids can also be dismissed, too. You guys hear me? All right. I'm trying to get my bearings up here. I like to move around a lot when I talk, so if I fall off the stage, don't be surprised. <laughs> we'll see how this goes. Um, I'm going to move that at least. So, yeah, good morning, church. It's great to be here. Um, I feel really high. This is unusual for me. I, I'm used to speaking to people, but not in, on top of and above everybody. Um, <laughs> So Daryl emailed me earlier this week, I think Sunday or Monday, and said he'd been praying about this communion service today. And the Lord had just um, kept putting my name on his heart, and he, he asked me to pray about sharing. And, and I thought, okay, you know, there might be something here. And um, as I continued to pray about it, um, just realizing the Lord has been working in me over the last six, eight months, speaking to me, sharing things uh, with me, visions, um, and talking with other people, uh, um, just some things that I feel are pertinent to us as a body as we've gone through and are in the middle of this transition season. So I um, just felt peace about this being sort of the time to, to share some of those things. Um, and so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get into, I'll give you a few words to think about as I get started. And if you, if you zone out after these first couple minutes here, you get these three words at least, and you can say, oh, well, he started talking about this, and uh, what did, what did uh, you know, you can at least remember these three things, maybe. Um, spiritual warfare, um, we, ended, we just ended Ephesians, those of you who, I know we have a lot of visitors today, and welcome, welcome to Mac, those of you who are visiting or guests today. Um, we just finished Ephesians, Ephesians 6 is, uh, ends with spiritual warfare. Um, we are in the spiritual places and in, in the heavenly places. So spiritual warfare. We're gonna, I'm going to talk about um, how we're doing that as a body or how we're not doing that as a body. How we have done that as a body and how maybe we haven't done that as a body. Um, and then repentance or submission um, and where maybe we need to be looking at repenting as a body collectively. So we'll, come, we'll get into that a little bit more. Um, and submission goes along with that, repentance, submission. Um, and then <clears throat> the other piece being, um, I guess, sort of a, a tag on to, I think, specifically what I want us to look, look at and think about today is a specific spirit of isolation or loneliness that I feel like we need to be warring against. So, um, as we get into this, well, before we get into this, let me just pray if I could. Um, so, join me in prayer. Father, just thank you for uh, this opportunity this morning to, to be here and share your words. I just pray uh, your Holy Spirit would come and um, bring us focus. And we pray against the enemy who would want to distract us and any, any spirit that the enemy is using right now to distract us and um, make our wine, minds wander and, and think about other things. Lord, I just pray for your spirit to come and um, focus our hearts and our minds. And also, Lord, I just pray for myself that your words would uh, come clearly through me. Anything not of you would, be, uh, would just drop to the ground and fade away, Lord. Uh, Come Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name we pray, amen. And so, we're going to, after we talk about some of these things, we're going to enter into some prayer time, actually, uh, and practice uh, some of this actual spiritual warfare in groups of, you know, people around you, 
will kind of um, make small groups, okay, and, and do some warfare. Um, and, and so we'll, we'll get into that here in a little bit. Um, so as I mentioned, Ephesians is, is, is ended with um, this verse in 6.12. It doesn't end with 12, but he, he goes into the, the armor um, after verse 12. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the powers, against the forces of the darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, right, therefore, so uh, take up the full armor of God. So we're battling um, in the spiritual. And so, and it's riddled a little bit throughout the book, the term heavenly places. Excuse me. Um, in chapter 1, verse 3, and chapter 1, verse 20, 2, 6, uh, chapter 3, 10, and, and 6, 12. So we are in a spiritual, right? I don't think I need to harp on that a whole lot. We live in a spiritual world, though us as Western, Western Americans, we tend not to see it or live in it as much as I think you know, other cultures around the world. So I want to just, again, take some time to, to acknowledge that. And, and then I'm, I want to share a little story, I guess. So um, from my personal experience in, in spiritual warfare and... Um, goes back, I guess, I had this experience about eight years ago. Um, my wife and I had the privilege of going overseas with Youth with a Mission and receiving some training, uh, missionary training. So we were overseas for about 10 months, and part of our time there, we were, um, for those of you who don't know, YWAM is a, it's a school-based, basic a missionary training, uh, at least in part. It, is what it is. It's, it's all about just preparing and equipping and training people to come up in, into the mission field. And so we were at two schools. The second school was called the Family Ministry School. And um, by this point, we had been married something like six or seven years. Yeah, seven years, something like that. So um, we were at a place in our marriage where we were really receiving a lot um, during this ministry training time, we grew a lot in our, in our marriage. Um, we had a pretty fairly healthy marriage. We'd gone through a fair amount of struggle early on. But um, anyway, so we'd come to this sort of block or impasse, if you will, that we kept coming up against. And so while we were overseas with YWAM, entered into this uh, time of prayer ministry with a pastor, uh, the Lord had revealed to me that there was just something there in me that was... I wasn't relating, I wasn't giving, I was cut off, I was only going so far in giving myself to my wife in, in terms of just being present uh, relationally. So, uh, and what that was for me was um, I had experienced some things early in life as a child, as a kid, you know, several times throughout my upbringing that um, I had made a vow to work. Let me back up. I'm going too fast here. But I had experienced some things as a kid that I was left alone. I was forgotten. I was um, just left. You know, maybe my parents forgot to pick me up from somewhere or uh, forgot about an event I was involved in or whatever it was. That hurt, okay? I made a vow, and I didn't know it at the time. I made a vow that I wasn't going to depend on people. I had to be strong. I, I had to take care of myself. And so it was this vow of isolation, uh, this vow of not being open to and uh, only giving so much in a sense and depending on people so much. So we'd come to this point in this prayer ministry time overseas when we were with YWAM. And it was a, it was a vow. The Lord said, you know, this, this needs to be broken. This is what it is. It's rooted in this sort of wound or this, this particular, these particular instances in your life. And cut that off, and um, and receive the truth and healing of, of who God is in that. So, um, it's kind of funny. I'm kind of glossing over some of the details of that, but it was after that my wife started to notice things that showed that you know now I was relating a little bit more. I was more fully in this relationship. Things like remembering things that she said, 
Okay, it wasn't like I just, amnesia was gone all of a sudden, but I was more engaged, therefore I was caring more, therefore I was understand, I was hearing more. Things like, I need you to go to the grocery store after work and pick up this. I, I wouldn't remember those things in the past, but then I was now. So on a very practical level, uh, you know, I think that's kind of silly maybe, but um, it was all about where I was invested mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. And so, um, so, so why am I telling you this? It's kind of a jump, you know, eight years back in my life and my childhood, blah, blah, blah. What, what does this have to do with today and why I'm up here? And, um, and take a look back, I want to, I think, take a look back at where we are as a body, okay? So transition with me to here today, present day, last several years, uh, if you will. And those of you who are visitors, um, just a quick recap, uh, if you will. We had a pastor, um, we, lo we currently do not have a pastor, but the pastor who was here um, was here for about 20 years and did awesome, ama amazing things. The Lord did amazing work through him, and we've come through amazing seasons of just growth and uh, multiplication and uh, just spiritual blessing uh, that's just been amazing for our church to see and for the denomination to see uh, and, and other churches around the world to see. So. Um, but that, that pastor is no longer uh, here. We don't have a pastor now. Um, and so what I want to look at a little bit is the spiritual warfare piece. Where, um, where was the spiritual battle at? And where is the spiritual battle at now while Guy Fons was here as our pastor? And where are we, what, what can we look back in our past and say, we need to learn from that, or we have learned from that, or we, we are learning from that. Um, and so, um, you know, again, it's not about Guy Fawns, uh, but just acknowledging that there was a spiritual battle just waged against Guy Fawns and against this body, uh, in a lot of ways through Guy Fawns. And so where, what, have we, what have we been opened up to? What have we been exposed to? And what, are we battling against that? Are we coming against those uh, evil spirits that are, are trying to work against us? And if you, those of us who, who knew and know Guy Fawns, I think part of what we see looking back and what we saw, uh, maybe what we still see too, but um, is this spirit of loneliness or isolation that I was speaking to about my own experience? And so I just told that story to kind of relate to uh, I guess I understood, understand this a little bit. Um, and I, I'm, my heart's broken for us in that need to battle against that spirit of loneliness and isolation. And so to break it down a little bit more, maybe it's um, we as a body agreed to go it alone. Um, you know, I think Guy made that sort of vow, if you will, um, to, to go it alone. And maybe we've agreed to that. Maybe you've agreed to that personally. I agreed to that personally, even subconsciously in my, in my youth. Um, or maybe it just happened to us. And we've got this battle that was um, sort of brought to us, this spirit of loneliness or isolation that was brought to us. And, and maybe you personally don't get that or you don't, you don't relate with what I'm saying about that particular spirit of loneliness or isolation. But there's some other spiritual battle going on in your life. Um, maybe it's a spirit of greed or a spirit of uh, hatred or a spirit of um, jealousy. Or, you know, there's, we, we have to identify these spirits so that we know how to come against them. And for us as a body, I guess I want to urge us today to think about that and take some time corporately to pray against that spirit, um, particularly isolation. Um, and what's interesting about this spirit is that, and I've only been here seven years. My wife and I have been here seven years. Guy was here 20 years, and there was the growth that this church saw, I did not necessarily see, but I've heard stories. You know, this, this room was packed out, two, two services a mor Sunday morning, you know, a thousand people here every Sunday morning. Obviously, the church plants, we multiplied and planted churches, and the coffee ministry was huge, and... And, and during that time, there was this sense of community, right? The, the internship. We were, I think, um, proud of 
just who we were as a community. This word community, I, from what I gather, you know, is something that we were. You know, we, we, it was like Mac community. They kind of went synonymously. And so even during those blessed years, um, I, I would argue there was this spirit of isolation underneath everything, warring and battling against us. And so, um, so we need to acknowledge that and, and come against that corporately. I guess this is my, one of my biggest points here this morning is corporately, how do we do that? Okay. And we're kind of coming to the end of a year of new leadership model. We're, we're going to transition into year two here pretty soon. Um, you know, and so, you know, I think it's a, a good time to reflect back. You know, this year has been a transition year. Um, there's been ups and downs, right? There's been a lot of, um, and, and so it's just a, let's go back prior to, okay? And, and how have we spent this year and how are we going to spend our present time moving forward in that spiritual battle? So, um, <clears throat> so one other point to make, and I'm looking at the clock, just, I know everybody's probably, well, how are we doing on time? Um, so I'm looking at the clock, even though it probably doesn't mean anything, because I, I need to say what I need to say. So, um, <clears throat> the other piece is the repentance piece and the submission piece. Um, my own, whoa, sorry, my own experience um, with this spiritual sort of release and, and, and warfare I acknowledged this vow that I had made to go it alone, um, to be in isolation. Um, and then once I acknowledged, you know, and received that, that healing from the Lord and that new life, um, then I was able to repent and ask for forgiveness and say, Lord, I'm sorry. Uh, not in a guilt trippy sort of way, but just to acknowledge, you know, I need to, I need to turn from this, uh, this choice that I had made and repent and turn 180 degrees and turn the other way. So, um, you know, it comes in the, the form of, you know, submitting to the Lord. And I think uh, that's another piece of spiritual warfare is the, the enemy hates community. The enemy hates the triune God, you know, Father, Son, and Spirit, which is all about relating and being in community. It's all about uh, just being, being together, right? It's inter this intertwining of who we are. And so the enemy is, is warring against that submission. You know, the Father, Son, and Spirit, they're in submission to one another. And we're, we're in submission to one another, and, or should be. And so the enemy is warring against that repentance, that, that spirit of and the attitude of submission to one another. And so um, once, you know, once we receive that healing, once we receive that new life, that revelation of the vow that we've committed to, we're able to then go back to the Lord and say, I'm sorry. Um, and, and for me, earlier this year, and this is where I guess it sort of started with me earlier in the year, is realizing that I was having some struggles with church leadership in general. We were starting into this new season, this new transition phase. And I was just struggling. And I, I, I took it to the Lord and said, Lord, what is this about? I, I know these guys. I know these people. Uh, I trust you. What, why am I struggling here? And... Um, it was me again going back to this isolation spirit and this woundedness of being um, unable to trust and open up to other people uh, because that spirit had been brought into us as a body, okay, on some level. So uh, that, for me, that's, that's where it was. Um, it's where the, the dots connect, I guess, is there was this spirit again that came back and that I was exposed to. And so I was able to acknowledge that, receive the truth, and turn from that and come to the Lord and say, Lord, I'm sorry. I want to trust. I want to, I, want to, I want to follow you and I want to follow what you're doing in our midst. And so turning from that attitude of um, 
isolation and woundedness, essentially. So, um, so to kind of wrap this up, and we'll get into some prayer time here uh, together as a body. Um, some questions, I guess, to ask ourselves as we take this in. Um, we're being attacked, right? We're being attacked spiritually. How? Okay, so we need to figure that out. How is the Lord, how is this, this, the evil spirit, how is the enemy attacking us? Um, what do we as a community need to repent from? Okay, that's maybe a challenging one. And, and you know, maybe you're sitting here going, what, what is, this doesn't have anything to do with me, or I don't relate to this, or I wish he'd stop talking about, you know, the past or whatever. Take that to the Lord. If you're feeling offended, take it to the Lord, because that's ultimately um, where maybe the Lord needs to speak, right? Um, so what do we as a community need to repent from? Did we at least in part embrace a spirit of isolation or of being a lone ranger, or being, being lonely, being uh, the lone ranger? Um, and then just corporately needing to repent from and receive healing. Okay, so we can move forward in freedom as a body. So um, <clears throat> there's also the individual side of it too. Okay, maybe you're just a visitor. You're not. You're not from here. You're not going to be. You know, back. And where's the Lord? Where's Where's the battle at, uh, taking place in your life spiritually? What spirits uh, do you need to come against in the name of the Lord and uh, and defeat and and claim Jesus' blood over? Um, <clears throat> so we're going to do this transition here into this prayer time and um, give you a little bit of instruction, I guess, about what we're going to do. We're going to group up, okay, and maybe you don't want to group up with people around you. You can pray, you know, just by yourself or maybe you want to just pray one-on-one -on -one as a couple um, or with a friend, somebody nearby. Um, or just by yourself. But I want to, I kind of want us to come together as groups too um, and, and lift up our body. If you're a visitor here, lift up your body. But I ask you to uh, lift up our body, please, to and come, come against the evil one in the, Holy, with, in the name of the Holy Spirit and um, claim, claim Jesus' victory over this body. And come against the spirit of isolation, particularly um, for us as a body as we, as we move forward. Um, so we're going to do that. I'm going to pray here in a minute, and then we'll, you guys can start moving around. And I urge you to just take some time to be in silence together and listen. You know, maybe the Lord's storing things already right now in you, but maybe not yet. We're going to play some music, some recorded music, okay, to, um, to have going in the background. Gather up and um, take some time to just be in silence and listen, and then pray together. We'll do a couple songs uh, played here, and then the band's, the worship team's going to come up and play a couple songs. If you're still praying as a group, keep doing that. Keep praying together as a group. Don't feel like you have to stop and, and join the worship team. They're going to you know, try to play in such a way that you can still hear each other as you pray and, and continue in that prayer time. So... Um, if you, you know, maybe you don't want to pray with somebody in your row or nearby you. If there's somebody across the, the room that you need to go and talk to or pray with, or you feel the Lord stirring you to do that, do that too. Don't feel like you just have to stay. Let's see, who just sat by? Oh, I don't know these people. You know, if you don't, you know, it's not, it doesn't have to be awkward. Uh, it doesn't have to be forced. You know, do what the Lord's uh, urging you to do and pray with who you feel you need to pray with. So, um, so I'm going to pray for us, and then we'll, we'll get up and move the chairs around, and maybe that'll help with next week's uh, preparation for the rooms. I don't know. But, um, so let me, just, let me just pray for us. Father, we thank you for the victory we have in you. We thank you for your spirit that is uh, gentle and shows us the way, Lord, and we thank you for your spirit that is uh, able to overcome all the powers and rulers and principalities in the heavenly places, Lord. And um, 
Lord, we, Holy Spirit, we just ask you to come fill this room with your presence and uh, guide us, speak to us, guide us in our words and our prayers. And um, today here and, and as we go from here, show us how we are in this spiritual realm to battle and uh, claim your victory, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So go ahead. We can, you guys can move around and uh, move chairs around if you need to and uh, join together. Communion will come in a little bit, so that, don't worry about that, but you know, we'll have a transition to that when it's the time for that.
Well, you put food in my body, water in my dry bed, and to my blackened branches, you brought the springtime green of a new life. And nothing is impossible for you. Now you have redeemed my soul. From the pit of emptiness, you have redeemed my soul from death. You have redeemed my soul from the pit of emptiness. You have redeemed my soul from death. You have redeemed my soul from the pit of From the pit of emptiness, you have redeemed my soul from death. You love songs. You are the thief of my heart. Rhythm and rhyme, try to describe it.
Listen, all oh, you unborn children, and those yet to be born again, a seed from the God of heaven was planted here in the world of men. He grew up only to be broken. He grew up only to be buried. Hold on, I heard the prophet say, hold on, that's not the end. When the cross went up and the curtain came down, a hush ran across the stage. But when the stone was rolled back, all the angels came round and the earth stood up on his feet to say, Crown him love, crown him alive and well, crown him God of our salvation. Crown him lovely, crown him beautiful, he is God, and we adore him, la 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 la, we adore him. Listen, all you unborn children, and those yet to be born again, a seed from the God of heaven planted here in the world of men he grew up only to be broken he grew up only to be buried hold on i heard the prophet say hold on that's not the end because when the cross went up the curtain came down a hush ran across the stage but when the stone was rolled back all the angels came round and the earth stood up on his feet to say, crown him love, crown him alive and well, crown him God of our salvation, crown him lovely, crown him beautiful. came down and a hush ran across the stage but when the stone was rolled back all the angels came round and the earth stood up on his feet creation began to speak and here come jesus in a purple robe here come jesus like a lovely rose here come jesus
He was despised and rejected by people, one who experienced pain and was acquainted with illness. People hid their faces from him. He was despised, and we considered him insignificant. But he lifted up our illnesses. He carried our pain. Even though we thought he was being punished, attacked by God, and afflicted for something he had done. He was wounded because of our rebellious deeds, crushed because of our sins. He endured punishment that made us well. Because of his wounds, we have been healed. All of us had wandered off like sheep. Each of us had strayed off on his own path. But the Lord caused the sin of all of us to attack him. He was treated harshly and afflicted, but he did not even open his mouth. Like a lamb led to the slaughtering block, like a sheep silent before her shearers, he did not even open his mouth. He was led away after, our, after an unjust trial, but who even cared? Indeed, he was cut off from the land of the living. Because of the rebellion of his own people, he was wounded. Now when the hour had come, Jesus took his place at the table, and the apostles joined him. And he said to them, I have earnestly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it again until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he said, This is, take this, and divide it among yourselves. For I tell you that from now on I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. Then he took bread, and after giving thanks, he broke it and, said, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, he took the cup after they had eaten, saying, This cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. And we're going to take some time um, to embrace Jesus' new covenant in blood. Um, which I think is really um, pertinent as we see, as we see the sin in our own lives, as we see the things that, apart from Jesus, we cannot get through. Um, his blood and suffering is what pays for our sins. The only way our sins can be taken care of. The only way that we can have a right relationship with God and call Him our Father. Um, and we want to remember as we take this. Um, Jesus, the, the scripture we just read was in the context of the Passover meal, which was the Jewish celebration about God um, bringing them out of Israel, out of the slavery that they couldn't get themselves out of. Um, and at the same time, God spared them the judgment that he brought on the Egyptians. And Jesus is proclaiming in this a new covenant, new salvation from our slavery to sin and escaping that judgment. Um, so as we take the, the, the bread and the juice um, representing Jesus' body and blood, I want to encourage you to take some time to remember with thankfulness what Jesus did. Take time to examine um, in yourself, recenter on Jesus in this covenant. There's not another way to be right with God other than this covenant that Jesus made with his blood. Um, I encourage you to ask the question, am I taking Jesus seriously? Am I letting him affect every part of my life? Um, and we want to press into his love and his power for us. Um, Jesus is powerful to save, but to heal also and deliver, to love beyond what we uh, experience from any other source. Um, so if you're feeling a need for that, um, this is going to continue to be a time for prayer. Ask someone to pray with you to receive more of Jesus. Ask the Lord if there's someone that he wants you to, to, to pour into and to pray and to bless. Um, so the elders, if you, the elders who are helping us serve communion, would you come up um, now? And we're uh, over what our normal time is, but I just want to encourage you, um, as you're ready, um, come on up and um, just 
form a line and, and take the elements and you can go back to wherever you're si seated um, or wherever if you need to pray with someone. Um, if you have children in the children's ministry, I'd encourage you to, to go get them sometime soon, but we're going to continue with the time of worship, so you can bring them back in here if you want. Um, we'll, we'll go over time, but you're, you're welcome to leave if you need to. Um, so, Lord, I pray that you guide us to you, Lord. You invited us to sit around this table where you handed out your body and your blood. So we take this in remembrance of you. So come on up when you're ready. Precious is 
like to invite you guys to stand up and sing um, Amazing Grace to finish our time together. seen a glimpse of the depths of your love and your grace and the power of your grace. May we go in your grace. Lord, may we be vulnerable to believe your grace can touch and can heal all of our hurts and your grace can lead us as a church safely home, safely to you. You are our only safety net. Jesus, I thank you for your body and your blood and the hope, the love that we have from no other source. Bless my brothers and sisters. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. my help in 
trouble You will be my place of refuge You will cut these bindings free What can man do to me? You will turn your ear to me You will hear my cry for mercy You will loosen things unseen can